Between 1910 and 1970, some 8 million African Americans left the South to escape poverty and racism or just find better chances. Today, many of them with their families are heading back home. CBS News correspondent Michelle Miller has more on that this morning. Michelle, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Well, this trend is changing the face of the South and reversing the great migration that began 100 years ago. So much of the 20th century was about escaping the South, that there was not a member of this church that did not have people who had just come up from the South. Author Isabel Wilkerson has spent a decade researching the Great Migration, a period where 8 million African Americans fled the South from the 1910s through the 1970s. Every aspect of their lives was dictated by a system that we know as Jim Crow. It took the mass departure of this many people that finally sent the signal to the South that things had to change. During the 1940s alone, 1.6 million African Americans headed north or west. To Chicago, uh, to, to Detroit, to Cleveland, to Pittsburgh, to all those places that offered great factory and construction jobs. And, and a higher wage and a better life for your family. My apartment, that's where I was. Louise Brown was just 15 years old when her parents moved their family from Atlanta to New York in search of better opportunities. He built homes, she worked as a maid. I've been in New York since 1944. So when your children came to you and said, we're moving back, we're going south, you said, I said, okay, I'm ready. The last 30 years has brought a reversal of fortunes. The South is luring many families back. It would be better uh, as far as my family. That's my main focus. So is it more family oriented? More, more family oriented. Come this fall, all four generations of the Browns will relocate to Atlanta, a move that begins a second chapter of this family's uniquely American dream. We're the country of immigrants. We're the people who get up and go. Mel Palmer took the leap nearly a decade ago. At first, his father didn't understand. He didn't want me to come back to Atlanta or Mississippi. And when I moved to Atlanta, it took about four years for him to finally come down and visit me. And when he saw the quality of life and what the city had to offer, he was wondering why I didn't even move sooner. The old stigma of the South is no longer exists. Does it also mean that the South has come a long way? The South has come a long way partly because of the sacrifices that, the, that, that these people made in this great migration, I mean, forcing the South ultimately to re-examine itself. I think the big part of this movement is the new, gen, new young generation of African Americans. The market is more reasonable than in New York. A generation that brings with it a very powerful political force. The political professionals are absolutely paying attention to these new black migration patterns, especially ones who have been counting on blacks for Democratic votes, which they typically can. Yes. We saw a little bit of a change in the last election in Florida and in North Carolina and Virginia, and Hispanics and African Americans had a lot to do with turning those states from Republican to Democratic voting states. The reverse migration has also ushered in a new era of tolerance. The 2010 census shows that the South is becoming more welcoming to people of all backgrounds, especially Latino Americans. The idea of a white category is going to be meaningless. Uh, basically, uh, it'll be so much interracial marriage, uh, mixed race children. Uh, people then will think, white? What does that mean? For the Brown family, I can put my thermo spa over there. It's a homecoming that, in many ways, means a second chance for all. This is beautiful. Good for them. Well, Louise Brown plans to have her family back in Atlanta by her 83rd birthday at the end of next month. And she's been getting reacquainted with friends and family down there, including, incredibly, yeah. our own audio technician for this story, Daryl Johnson. Boy, you should have seen the two of them chat. We know Daryl. We love Daryl. <laughs> That's love him, excellent. Though. Fantastic. So, so Michelle, we, we, we know where they're going. What, what cities are they leaving up here? Over the last 30 years, Detroit saw the most loss, but right behind it, Chicago and then New York. And just to give you an idea about New York State, for example, it lost some 40,000 people in 2009. Half of them went down south. Wow. Michelle Miller, good stuff.